Hello everyone! In this video, we will discover the zero-knowledge proof and its implication in data protection. Without getting too technical, we will look at its origins and characteristics before explaining the concept in more practical terms. Finally, we will see why this type of protocol will become increasingly important in tomorrow's internet uses. Zero Knowledge Proof, or ZKP, is a secure protocol between two parties, a proof provider and a verifier. The idea is that a proof provider shows a verifier that a statement is true without giving him any other information. This type of protocol was designed in the 80s by Shafi Goldwasser, Silvio Michali and Charles Rakoff, who defined it as follows. Zero Knowledge Proofs are defined as those proofs that convey no additional knowledge other than the correctness of the proposition in question. ZKP generally consists of a three steps protocol. The first step is commitment. Here, the proof provider tells the verifier that he can prove the veracity of an information. Then, a challenge is issued by the verifier to the proof provider. In the case of XSL Labs, this could take the form of a QR code containing the challenge which must then be scanned by the proof provider in order to proceed to the final step, the response, which consists of the proof provider sending the response to meet the challenge. In order to better understand this, we will now take an example that will be much more meaningful, the Alibaba scale. Imagine that Alibaba is robbed of his purse by a thief who escapes into a cave with two paths, one to the left and one to the right. Alibaba who follow the thief, does not know which way the thief went. He chooses the left path, but reaches a dead end. So he thinks that the thief must have gone the other way. He comes back to the entrance and then goes to the right, but realizes that it is also a dead end and does not find the thief. The following days, Alibaba is robbed again, arrives in front of this cave and does not find the thief, no matter which direction he takes. After 40 days, Alibaba finally realizes that this cannot be a coincidence, as the probability that he will always take the wrong path is too small. So he decides to hide at the bottom of the cave and discovers that the thieves use a magic word that allows them to pass from one side of the cave to the other. There was a hidden door. Now let's examine a situation based on this story. We have a cave with two paths, A and B, connected by a door that requires the secret word to be opened. We also have a character, Peggy, who wants to prove to another character, Victor, that she can open the door, but she doesn't want to give him the secret word. Actually, she doesn't want to reveal any secret. To proceed, they decide to follow this protocol. In step one, Victor waits outside the cave without looking. Peggy enters the cave through one of the paths at random and goes to the door. Then, in step 2, Victor comes to the junction and flips a coin. Depending on the result, he yells A or B. Finally, in step 3, Peggy must appear on the side of the exit Victor previously asked for. There are then four possibilities. Number 1. If Peggy knows the secret word and enters on the correct side, she can walk back and completes the challenge. Number 2. If Peggy knows the secret word and she enters on the wrong side, she can go through the door and completes the challenge. Number three, if Peggy does not know the secret word and she enters on the correct side, she can still complete the challenge. Number four, if Peggy does not know the secret word and she enters on the wrong side, she cannot complete the challenge. We can see that if Peggy knows the secret word, then she will systematically validate the challenge. If she doesn't know it, there is a 50-50 chance that she won't be able to complete the challenge. This is not good enough. At this point, she could just be lucky and trick Victor. To solve this issue, Peggy and Victor will repeat the experiment a certain number of times. That way, the probability that Peggy systematically validates the challenge if she does not know the secret word will decrease with each trial according to the following formula 1 to the power of 2 times n. The probability of completing the challenge 20 times in a row is only 1 to the power of 2 times 20. That is less 
than one in a million. In this example, the repetition of the protocol between the two characters will make it more and more likely that Peggy knows the secret word. A certain number of attempts will eventually convince Victor. This is an interactive case of zero-knowledge proof. There are repeated interactions between Peggy, who is the proof provider, and Victor, who is the verifier. Now let's make this protocol non-interactive, which means there will only be one attempt. Let's imagine that Victor stands directly in front of the junction of path A and B. If Peggy enters through one of the paths and exits through the other, she will have opened the door. This implies that she must know the secret word. We can see that there is no need to repeat the protocol. How ZKP helps with data protection, the interest of ZKPs is obvious. They allow for a significant reduction in data sharing, which is especially important when dealing with sensitive data. ZKPs are starting to be used particularly in the field of blockchains. Indeed, it is problematic to share personal data in it due to the permanence of data inscribed within the blockchain, but also in regards to new data regulations. The irreversibility of the recorded data literally prevents the modification or deletion of this data, which is contrary to the spirit of the European GDPR, for example. Thus, some organizations are beginning to develop solutions that use certain forms of zero-knowledge proof. In the banking sector, JP Morgan or ING are using zero-knowledge ranch proof, which enables transactions to be validated without using exact data. Similarly, in order to hide all the data, the Zcash project relies on ZK SNARKs, a specific form of non-interactive ZKP. In the case of XSL Labs, our SDI will behave like a ZKP protocol where appropriate. A typical example would be an age verification. We shouldn't have to send the full details of an ID card to a verifier that requests user to be over 18 years old to get access to a service. In practice, the SDI can simply state, yes, the age is over 18, without revealing a date of birth or even the precise age of the user. These ZKPs find an immediate use case in the field of authentication, trading, administrative procedures and banking transactions. We are very excited to develop and integrate ZKP protocols in our ecosystem. This technology solves issues related to the GDPR and could find applications in many fields, from data protection to electronic voting. The use of ZKPs will spread online and is set to become a standard in the near future. By participating in this revolution, XSL Labs is contributing to the creation of the Internet of Trust. That's all for today. Stay tuned for more videos. Feel free to leave a comment below if you have any question and visit XSL Labs website for more information. Don't forget to like and subscribe to get updates about our project. See you soon!